On a mountaintop high above a large city stands the headquarters of a man devoted to the cause of freedom and justice. A war hero who has never stopped fighting against his country's enemies. A private citizen who is dedicating his life to the struggle against evil men everywhere. Captain Midnight. And there he is, Captain Midnight. <laughs> My goodness, right here in Little Frog Studios today. Richard Webb, so glad to have you with us. I'm uh, just delighted to be here. And uh, I'll tell you what, you look great today. How long ago was it you were doing these shows? 1956. 54 through uh, 57. Yeah. yeah. Now, back east, when I was a kid, um, I saw the radio, just saw, listened to the radio shows, mm -hmm. but you didn't have anything to do I didn't. That. I had never heard of Captain Midnight. I was walking down Columbia lot one day, and I fell in, in step with, with Harry Cohen, the head of the studio. Uh -huh. I cannot use the dialogue that he used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a family, family show. Here, but he yeah. said, uh, go down and crawl through the fence a hole in the fence, and he said, there's an apartment building on the other side of the street. They call themselves Screen Gems. And I said, uh, what is it about? He said, I don't know what it's about. Uh, dialogue deleted. Uh, but uh, I went down and crawled through the fence, went over to the apartment building. The, the secretary was by herself in the, in the office there. So I said, what is this part? She said, it's Captain Midnight. I said, what is that? She said, well, she told me as much as she could about it. And then uh, she said, uh, he's, he's only 30 years old. And I said, well, God will forgive me. And uh, finally I went in. There were six men in the office there. One of them was, was looking at me very, very intently. And uh, finally he said, Mr. Webb, how old are you? I said, I'm 31. He said, well, that's all. That, uh, and uh, they all quieted him down. It's interesting that that really seemed to make a difference, huh? One year to him made a big difference. So about six weeks later, we had about five shows in the can. He was on the set one day, and I had been working very hard, and I was sitting talking to him. I forgot. Uh, and I said, now that I'm a major in the Army Reserve, and he said, Webb, how old are you? <laughs> I said, I'm 38. <laughs> had to tell your commander the truth. Eh? I had to tell him the truth then. It's great to have you up here in the desert. It really is. And this is going to be some kind of a trip into nostalgia today with uh, Captain Midnight, and we appreciate Eddie Fontaine uh, bringing you up here and uh, sharing you with Eddie, us. thank you very much. <laughs> um, we've got to, now Captain Midnight wasn't the only thing you did. For instance... I uh, did 60 motion pictures, 240 television shows. Including a Star Trek. Uh -huh. uh, can we get in a little tighter on this picture? Here, here you are with a, with a really neat haircut, Dick. Um, what was this occasion here? That was, uh, what was this? Yankee Connecticut, Yankee. Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. There's Bing Crosby, Rhonda Fleming, and me. Yes, and uh, nice hair. Nice really, hair. Really nice hair. <laughs> so you, uh, you're most well known for Captain Midnight, but you are a, 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 an actor, too, and other stuff. Okay, all right, now here's the classic, the classic, Captain Midnight picture, the jacket. Have you still got the jacket? No, no, this is Border Patrol. Is it? Yeah. Second series. Second series that I did after Captain Midnight. All right. Following Captain Midnight. You look. You haven't changed much, Dick. You still look great. <laughs> the other thing I have to comment on, uh, you continue to have this wonderful, resonant voice. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything with that now? No, no. No kidding, it, because it'd be wonderful for voiceovers and this kind of thing. You have this wonderful... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never done anything with it. That's, that's, uh, that's interesting. I went to writing books. No kidding. Yeah. Tell us about your books. Look at this. Who are these people? This is Alan Ladd, me, Rhonda Fleming, uh, who, uh, what, what, Geraldine Fitzgerald, Pat Knowles, and... Uh, what was the other fellow's name? What's the occasion here? That was the occasion of the uh, OSS, where I had to uh, beat up on Alan Ladd. Oh, I see. That was four <laughs> days after I got out of World War II. <laughs> I was a captain. All right, now here is, uh, here is a very youthful Ronald Reagan. What, what was the occasion here? This was Variety Girl out at Warner Brothers. They had put me under contract. 
and uh, I was going around meeting people. So I was talking to Ronald one day, and the, the guy came by and he shot a couple of pictures. He said, you want this? I said, yeah, I'll take it, and I put it away. And when Ronald became governor, I took it out again, uh -huh. and uh, I put a little sign on it before either one of them were. And then when he became president, I said, Captain Midnight and President Ronald Reagan before either one of them were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, now here, there's Captain, there's Midnight. Captain Midnight, okay. And here's the jacket and everything. Tell us about the jacket, Dick. Well, the jacket, it depends on, uh, I have four grandchildren. And I thought, well, when I had one grandchild, I thought, well, I'll give it to, to that grandchild. <laughs> then I had two, and I thought, well, I'll cut it. <laughs> then I had three, and I thought, I'm getting into a little bit different thing now. When I had four, <clears throat> I just said, well, I think maybe, and I used, to, I used to tell the kids, I think I'll give it to the Smithsonian Institution. But I got up, the Smithsonian called me one day, and they said, would you bring, I said, would I, would I do what? They said, would you bring <laughs> the jacket and the scarf and et cetera, et cetera, and all your memorabilia down to Washington, D.C and present it to the neat. Smithsonian. That's neat. That must, that, must, that must give you a good feeling that you had a, made a real contribution to your craft. It does, it does. It does. That's great. Yeah. That's great. We're going to look at uh, some footage from Captain Midnight um, of years and years ago. Uh, our engineer, Steve Grimm, went through and picked out some really nice pieces of footage. And, but we've got to take a commercial break here first. We'll, uh, we'll be right back with Richard Webb. Captain Midnight. All right, we're back with Richard Webb, Captain Midnight. I just can't say that right, Dick. <laughs> Captain Midnight. There, I can't, <laughs> I just somehow can't say it like it's supposed to be said. Of course, in your career as Captain Midnight and, and as an actor, uh, you have a lot of anecdotes. One that tickles me especially is the one uh, with Ronald Reagan, who outranked oh, yeah. you. Yes, you Ronald know? Reagan was and, a... And, and he, he let you know that he outranked you. Well, I'll tell you, Bill Holden and I were both detailed to go out to the 462nd motion picture unit out in Culver City. We showed up, and we were told to go up and talk to the captain. We went up, knocked on... We were second lieutenants. We knocked <laughs> on the door, and we walked in, snapped our heels, blew salute. The captain got up, walked around the office, told us the entire mission of the Air Force, the entire mission of this, of this great uh, 442nd uh, motion picture unit. He said, came back to his desk 30 minutes later and said, are there any questions, gentlemen? We said, no, sir. That'll be all. We, we turned around and got out in the hall, and Bill Holden said, <laughs> That SOB. <laughs> that was Captain Ronald Reagan. I'll be doggone. <laughs> All the Democrats looking on will appreciate That's that, right. I'm sure. <laughs> to know that he was an SOB when he was a captain. It was he in the reserves, I guess. Um, he was in that, the reserves, yes. Yeah. But he, he was on active duty then. That was during the war. Uh -huh. Okay, now we got to look at this. Uh, our engineer, Steve Grimm, uh, put together some excerpts from one of the old Captain Midnight shows. Okay. And uh, we're going to look at that now. And then, uh, and then have a few comments on it afterwards. All right. Icky, I know. Warm up the silver dart. Roger. As long as you're flying low for a look at the country, I thought I'd keep the Omnicounter tuned up in case we pass over one of those old Spanish treasures. We don't know what the range of it is yet, but there's nothing like being prepared. What do you think? I think we ought to go down there and take a look around. Take over. Calling Secret Squadron Headquarters. This is SQ-1 calling Headquarters. Come in, SQ-3. This is SQ-3. Go ahead. Give me the name of a Secret Squadron member living in or around Sandstone, New Mexico. It's just a few miles from the border. Right. Hold on.
Jimmy Sawyer, SQ-248, age 15, lives on the Running W Ranch, 10 miles south-southwest of Sandstone, New Mexico. Thanks, Tut. Changing course for the Running W Ranch. Out. Calling SQ-248. Calling SQ-248. This is SQ-248. Come in, please. This is SQ-1 calling from the Silver Dart. SQ-1? And SQ-2. We are approaching from south-southwest. Where can we land? There's a big level stretch of field just north of here. You can't miss it. Can you meet us? Yes, sir. Thanks, Captain Midnight. Thanks a lot. No thanks necessary. You earned it. And what's more, the sheriff has agreed to take over your guardianship. Gee, that's swell. Maybe you can come back again soon for a real wild horse roundup. Maybe we will. And uh, take Icky for riding the buckboard. No thanks. The only riding I'll do from now on is in the silver dart. Side saddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, that is marvelous, marvelous stuff. Those are some excerpts from uh, some footage from uh, Richard Webb's uh, activities back in the 50s. Activities of Captain Midnight. Yeah, marvelous. <laughs> Just marvelous. The acting style, was that the style or, you know, just ever so slightly overdone, like Batman of, a, of another era? It Was that because uh, it was kids mostly or...? It was just the style of the era. It was just the style of the era. Everything was open and, and above board. And just slightly overdone. I never heard it called slightly overdone before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's not quite natural, is what I'm saying. It's, but it's just, it, we're, I'm getting such a big kick out of this footage that we're uh, <laughs> seeing. And we're going to see some Ovaltine commercials and... Stuff like that, but first All we gotta right. take. We gotta take. Uh, I'm gonna ask you, and you better have the right answer ready. I'm gonna ask you when we come back, what you, how you like Ovaltine, and Captain Midnight better tell the truth. Let All me right. tell you. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll be back after this. It's Captain Midnight. Brought to you by Ovaltine. Chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Delicious, nutritious, instant Ovaltine. The fortified food drink that tops them all. Now for a visit to the Secret Squadron Hall of Fame. Gee, the Secret Squadron Hall of Fame. Yes, Jack, and every one of these great athletes is a member of the Secret Squadron. For example, Crazy Legs Hirsch, one of football's all-time, all-time greats. And Florence Chadwick, world-famous English Channel swimmer. And here is Duke Snyder. His four home runs during the 1955 World Series led the Brooklyn Dodgers to their first world championship. Let's join Duke in the clubhouse. Duke, what do you do to keep yourself in top condition? Well, Captain Midnight, I get plenty of sleep, exercise, and the right kind of foods. And I drink chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Remember, I said Ovaltine, not one of those imitation milk flavorings or the other kind with just a few vitamins. That's right, Duke. Ovaltine's got what it takes. 27 vitamins, minerals, and other essential food elements that make Ovaltine such a rich source of nourishment. And Ovaltine tastes good, too. Right again, Duke. Boys and girls, drink your Ovaltine every day, just as Duke Snyder says. Get chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Attention all Secret Squadron members and fighters for justice everywhere. A friend of mine discovered the location of a satellite moon close enough to Earth to be used as a military space station. But before he could reveal his discovery to our government, he was murdered. Our next mission is to find his murderer and the secret of the lost moon. We'll rendezvous here at headquarters. This is Captain Midnight signing off with the code of the Secret Squadron. Justice through strength and courage. Out. <laughs> 
After Midnight was brought to you by Kicks, the crispy corn cereal. Kicks, real food for action. Listen again next week to Captain Midnight. Boy, you had a lot of sell. I mean, you could sell that stuff. And I bet you ate Kicks and Wheaties and, and uh, Ovaltine. Tell me, did you like Ovaltine really? Uh, yes, I did like <laughs> Ovaltine. <laughs> you know, I tried it. Never did really like it. I didn't dislike it, you know, but you had to buy it because you had to send the label or something in for the secret squadron. That's thing. right. Listen, I meant to ask you, how come I never got mine? You, I never got your, your, your request. You're putting me on. No, I'm not putting you on. <laughs> Dick, this has been just marvelous, this whole experience uh, with Captain Midnight. Uh, what are you doing these days? Well, I've just written a book, Captain Midnight. 498 pages of, of, of the book, Captain Midnight. Anecdotes about the part in the series and this kind of thing? Uh, I have uh, Olin Soule is in it and uh, Sid Melton. I have three parts of the book, uh -huh. four parts, because the first part is the, the radio days. And then right. uh, 498 pages of uh, Captain Midnight. That's neat. Icky, what, uh, you know, he's a, that's a familiar play, uh, face. He, he had a lot of other parts oh, and yeah, other he, stuff. He's, he's just, like, just like me, he's, he's done a lot of other parts. Because that's a very familiar, well, who is that really? Sid Melton. Okay, done a lot of stuff. Seems oh, like yeah. he was in the Phil Silvers he was. A series he was, or something was, like yeah. that. Uh -huh. Marvelous. Yeah. So the book is out? Is it published? No, it's not published yet. My agent has it on the market, but it's not okay. published yet. I'll tell you what, all of us who are in our 40s, 50s, and 60s are going to want the book. Okay. It's marvelous. I, I can't believe that some publisher won't pick that up and go with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, yeah, listen, it's marvelous. We've got to do this again sometime. Okay, anytime you and, want. Uh, be, because this footage, and I know the viewers have really enjoyed this trip into nostalgia that we've had uh, during this half hour today. All right. All uh, right. People are going to want to know where you live now, this kind of thing. I live in Van Nuys. That's it. All kinds of uh, retired people that I know live down That's in the That's what I understand. Lot, all kinds of retired people. We have some very there. good friends who live uh, in Van Nuys. The guy right next door to me is one of the head newscasters for CBS. It's a neat area. Neat, neat area. area to yeah. live in. No smog there. Uh, yes, there is. There's smog. Really? There's smog all over the L.A. area. No kidding. They must, yes. the peop, my, our friends who live in Van Nuys say there's no smog there. They're lying, right? <laughs> I would say very calmly, they're lying. <laughs> Get them into golf now. We've, we've got to do this again sometime. This has been a marvelous experience, and uh, lots of luck to you. And the book, Dick. The book. The book. The Captain yes. Midnight Captain book. Captain Midnight, the book. It will That's be right. published by that time. Terrific. I hope it's published by Christmas. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Captain Midnight, Richard Webb has been our guest today. And um, lots of luck to you. It's Captain Midnight. That's how you say it. I'll never get it, Captain Midnight. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. We'll be back to tell you what's happening on tomorrow's show after this. Well, what a flight into the past today with Captain Men Midnight. Just a wonderful show with Richard Webb. He's a delightful person. Uh, I'm hoping he'll come back to the desert soon and we'll do another show with him. Just great and I um, uh, hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did. But for right now, this is Dick Dorwald for High Desert AM, out.